So what exactly is calculus all about? If you've not taken calculus yet and you're wondering like what exactly do we learn about in calculus? Like why do they even call it calculus? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And there's a couple of things that if you've gotten up to pre-calculus so far, or maybe algebra two, you might have talked a little bit about limits. Calculus is basically a study of limits. It's a limit when something gets really close to something, for example, like maybe you're approaching a certain value, maybe things are getting really, really small, like the limit as uh, something approaches zero, or it could be the limit as something gets really large, like maybe you're approaching positive infinity or maybe you're approaching negative infinity. But calculus is basically a study of limits. And there's two different types of problems that you typically deal with in calculus. One is referred to as derivatives, and the other is referred to as integrals. And we're gonna take a little bit of a bird's eye view at what these things are referring to in this video. So the first thing is, let's just say you had a graph like this. Let's say this is the graph of uh, a parabola uh, shifted up one. Let's say it's like a f of x equals x squared plus one, for example. And let's say you were to take like uh, a couple of points here on this graph right here. And if we go ahead and draw a line through these two points, see how it cuts through the graph like that? This is referred to as a secant line. And if you were to find the slope between these two points or the slope of the secant line, that's referred to as the average rate of change. It's basically like how fast is this line going up between these two points. But here's where the calculus comes in. And you may have learned this in pre-calculus when you learned the difference quotient. But what happens is if you take a limit, meaning as this distance, this horizontal distance between these two points gets smaller and smaller and smaller, this point here gets closer and closer and closer to this original point here, this point here. And so what happens is instead of getting the average rate of change, okay, the slope of the line between these two points, as this point here gets closer to this point and that distance approaches zero, again, we're talking about limits, you're gonna get what's referred to as the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, that's this line right here, and that's referred to as a tangent line. It just barely touches the graph. You may remember this from geometry when you had circles and you had like a tangent to a circle, it just touches it at one point. That's what's happening here. This tangent line, we're getting the instantaneous rate of change, which is referred to as the slope of this tangent line. Now, when you learn about derivatives, what you're getting is you're getting a formula that will allow you to find the slope of that tangent line at any point along a particular function or graph. So like you can see if I'm over here, this would have like a negative slope. And over here it would have like a zero slope, it's horizontal. And over here it has a positive slope and more positive and you know, it's getting even steeper, right? But what you're doing is when you find this derivative, which is also oftentimes written like this, f prime of x, it's the function, but you can see it's f prime, that's referring to the first derivative or the derivative of the function, and it's a formula for the slope of that tangent line at any point along the graph. It's the instantaneous rate of change. But again, it all boils back down to taking that limit as the distance between these two points became zero, and that's what gives us that instantaneous rate of change. Okay, now the second problem that's tackled in calculus, calculus one at least, is uh, referred to as an integral, okay? And an integral is really referred, uh, is actually what it is, you're finding like an area, okay? And in this case, what we could do is we could find the area underneath a particular curve. So say for example, if I wanted to find the area underneath this parabola, but from zero to two. So let's just kind of draw that right here. Now it's in a regular shape, you know, it's not like a nice triangle or trapezoid or, uh, you know, a shape that we're familiar with. How would we get this exact area of this region? Okay, that's one of the problems that we tackle in calculus. But what I want to show you is you can do something called an approximation where you could divide this region up into rectangles. For example, if I was to draw a rectangle like this and draw a rectangle like this, I could find the area of each of these rectangles, add them together and get kind of an approximate area of that region. But what you do in calculus is you say, well, okay, that's two rectangles. What happens if I was to maybe make, instead of two rectangles, four rectangles? Let's look at that example. Well, now what happens is the rectangles are getting thinner, okay, or narrower, you could say. But look what's happening. Now it's a little bit more closely approximating that area. It's still an over-approximation. You can see this a little bit above that curve, so it's a little bit 
bigger than the actual area. But what happens if we maybe made eight rectangles and made them even thinner and maybe like a hundred rectangles? And what would happen as the limit of those rectangles went to infinity? So again, talking about limits, uh, we're approaching infinity. So that's you know a limit. But what happens is those rectangles get very, very thin, okay, like paper thin. And so what would happen is we would actually end up getting the exact area underneath this curve between the x-axis and below that curve between zero and two. And that's what starts to look like this right here. This is referred to as an integral, okay, and you're finding that area. Uh, it's like a summation. It's a sum of all those rectangles, but it's an infinite sum. So that's what we're tackling in calculus. We're actually looking at things that we learned previously, okay, things like slope, okay, things like uh, summations or the sigma notation, but we're taking it one step further by taking a limit, okay, limit as the distance approaches zero or maybe as the sum of something goes to infinity. So I hope this gave you a little insight into what you might be getting into as you get into a calculus course for the first time.